Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, this is Foundry VTT version 12, this is Curse of Strahd, <laughs> and a very strange video. Um, I am going through and making some changes to my Curse of Strahd in light of a few bits and bobs that have come up. Um, things like Ripper's Media Optimizer, um, which is going to save an awful lot of space. Uh, and I wanted to make some other adjustments as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm back in my landing page making adjustments. I'm one of those people, I like, always tweaking. <laughs> and I know some of you guys will be the same, and it's like, yeah, yeah, it's almost there, almost there. But I'm trying to tidy myself up. I'm trying to organise myself a bit better. Um, so, for some of you, this video might not be very interesting at all. Um, but for others, uh, you know, it's just I'm just going to show you my process and what I'm doing at the moment to tidy things up a bit. Uh, also, using Tagger Mod. So we're not going to look at the tagger mod specifically. Um, we might save that for another video, but I am going to be using it in this to tidy things up. And there's a particular reason I want to do the use tagger. And I might need your help with it. Is uh, If I open my compendium here, I have a Curse of Strahd compendium that I'm putting together. So this is going to be a packaged adventure for all the stuff for Curse of Strahd, what I'm doing. So, a couple of things on that. One, I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to do this in a way to be able to share it with you guys, but I'm gonna try, okay? Um, it's gonna be a big learning curve for me to get this right. We have played a little bit with um, item, uh, with creating some items and stuff like that, but I'm gonna see if I can package entire scenes. So what that means is I need to make sure all my stuff is in the right place so that when it packages up, it brings everything across that you need. Um, I also need to make sure that things tag correctly, hence tagger. And that's, I think, going to be one of the biggest challenges. So every time you put down a tile, it gives it a, a name and it's kind of a, a junk name. It's just a reference. Every time you use that scene in a different uh, area so you put it into a different one of your own games within your own foundry um, or you export it so somebody else can upload it or whatever it might be those tags change so <laughs> so you find things like my buttons on the left here are referring to tiles that no longer exist even though the tile is there the names are wrong so tagger should the idea is is it will you can give it a name and say that's the name of the tile don't bloody change it um, so your things like my buttons will then reference the tile name rather than that junky Cody one it gives it. So it means when you import it, it should lock it. So that's one of the challenges, and I think that's probably the bit I'm going to struggle with the most. Second challenge is if I'm going to share my stuff for Curse of Strahd, I need to be really careful to not give you the module. Because it's not my module to give, obviously, copyright and everything else like that. So in no way, shape or form is are you going to be able to run this without having a copy of the module. All right. So that's really important that we, we, we walk the correct side of that fine line. Um, so will I have these handouts as part of the journal? Yes, I will. Will I have actual descriptions and things? of? No, I won't. I won't have that. You will need the module to run it. That's that's the plan. This is quite a way off, guys. Don't get too excited. This is going to be delivered in the next few days, right? <laughs> this is going to be a work in progress, and it might never happen, but I'm trying to org my, organize myself quite early on so that if we get to a point where I can go, hey guys, look, here's, here's what I did. If you want to use it, go ahead. Um, it's ready to go, all right? Because trust me, it's quite a lot of work to backdate to get it ready for that. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, third challenge is, I can't share any resources with you that I don't have permission to share with you, of course. So I need to be really careful of copyright. Therefore, Benios Maps, I will not be using Benios Maps because I don't have rights to give them away. OK, because they're all all of them behind a paywall. I mean, we've seen the quality of them. They're really good. They're really nice. Um, so I'm going to be sticking with the maps that I have been using. Um, which what, what ones are they? Uh, you know, the ones I mean, surely. Um, hang on a second. Let me just double check the name. Anabar, that's the one. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, look, bring up all the wrong things now. Um, so I will continue using Anabar's maps because the Curse of Strahd lot 
are freely available there's no problem um, and I will not be charging for this module in any way shape or form I'm building it anyway for my guys so that if you if we get to a point as a big if guys big if we get to a point where I'm able to package it up and go here have it um, we haven't got to worry about copyright I'm not making any money off of that or anything like that at all so I won't be charging for it okay so what are some of the things I need to do to make sure that this is suitable well first of all for packaging I, what I'm doing right at the moment, and I'm only going to do a couple of these, and then I'll, I'll cut the video and, and just show you the, the, like the new bits I need to do. Each of these journal items in here, these handouts, which are just images, I need to go in, and at the moment, they are all saved on my desktop. So, of course, if I package this, it's, you're, never, you're never going to get these images and the bits that you need. Uh, and these again, these aren't formal ones from the module. So I need to update where I'm storing my files. Now the good thing is, so if I go into my modules, I can go to my CG Curse of Strahd, which is the module I've created. And in here I've got my packs. And yes, I'm trying to be organized. I go to my landing page, which is where I've got all of this stuff. I can then choose my file. Media Optimizer is gonna do its thing, which is great. Um, and that's going to update this journal entry so that this now this this image is saved in the same place that the module will pack from if that makes sense to you okay so when I if I <laughs> deliver it to anybody else even if I create it on you know another machine you know another PC using my foundry login um, it should work and that's that's the best way for me to test it so all I'm doing is going into each of these and you can see my image source here is in my DM folder uh, DM folder stuff um, my cursor strat that's not where I want it to be so here there is in my DM folder of stuff my maps cursor strat in my tiles folder no I need it to be in my modules in my cursor strat in those packs in the scenes and I'm sticking these all in the landing page because that's where they are what one was I just doing <laughs> Coiland letter two was it I can change it yes it was good ah <laughs> oh, dear no it's the death house letter absolutely not right I want to change that then <laughs> so uh I'm still in the correct, correct folder I want my death house letter it's not in there it, it, did I put it? It's in the death house. There we go. So it, this is what I mean. My stuff's all over the place, but now it's starting to get nice and neat and tidy, and it's all going to be correctly, uh, correctly in the right place. There we go. Death house letter. All right. Um, and I've also added in a map of the village of Barovia, um, and I put in the statue. So I need to be careful about using this map. I'm gonna change that one out because I believe this is Anabar's one. That, sorry, not Anabar's, um, Benios one. Uh, I just need to verify that. So there's a few bits like that I'm going to do. All right, so the other thing I need to do, and this is the painstaking bit, is I need to implement Tagger <laughs> on all of my items. And I've got a few in here. Let's. Let's start at the bottom here and do the holy symbol, okay? So that's going to bring this tile up here. Now, if we look at this tile, first of all, have I updated the image to the correct place? Yes, I've already done that. I did that off screen. Okay, so that's bringing in the correct image. And you can see down here, because I've got Tagger installed, I've got this separate section. And I've called this tile, I've tagged it with LP for landing page, holy symbol okay so that is the only time that will ever get used because there will only be one holy symbol on the landing page and I can reference that from anywhere so later on in the module if they find the holy symbol I can say oh show the LP holy symbol wherever you find it and it will reveal it even though it's on a different scene so I've got that there LP holy symbol uh, the image is updated and there's no triggers on this because it literally is to show and hide. So we update that. Now on my holy symbol button over here, first of all, I needed to update the background image and make sure that's in the correct place, which I've already done. Um, I gave this one a tag. It actually doesn't need a tag. 
because it's not being referenced from anywhere else. Actually, that might not be true. I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, but in my triggers, I don't need to worry about anything here. I don't. Uh, I do need to update these images here as well. Okay, so these are the images that will be between the black and the green for the button itself. Okay, and I've already updated those. You can see this is in my CG Curse of Strahd pack. Um, Curse of Strahd Adventure Scenes Landing Page. But under Actions, when I'm showing that holy symbol, I put in Select Entity Holy Symbol, but that's not the correct way to do it. I need to actually use this Use Tagger button on the right-hand side. And look, Enter Tag Name. Now, I don't want that junk. I want that one. Okay, so as you can see, the options here is when I click that button, it's going to try and do those actions for any tile that is tagged as LP Holy Symbol. Match every term, exact term, or any term. So you can be, get really quite clever with this. And which scene? I could do all scenes. So anywhere across all of the maps that would activate those tiles. But obviously, I've only got it in this one scene. Active scene is enough. I can save that and you can see that that's now been tagged correctly. So is this a long and laborious process? Yes, it is. Um, but it will be correct. <laughs> oh, the faith. <laughs> it should be absolutely correct. Um, so I've gone through and I've already updated all of my images. What I do need to do is just make sure. So again, I've put a tag on here which is great. This is now tagged. Um, again, there's no no actions on here apart from opening the party journal when they click on it. Uh, that's all fine. We've just been looking at the journal. Um, but my button itself, when I look at the actions, activate that tile rather than, but I need to actually say activate the tag. Not just the tile with that name, because those names will change. So I want to activate that tile. I also need to... So this is... And I played with it a bit, and I couldn't quite work out. I'm thinking, Tagger's brilliant. Everybody raves about Tagger that I've I've looked at and said how useful it is. And I was struggling to get it to work. Why? Because I was using... If I go back into here... I was just using the name of the tag in here rather than actually saying, no, use tagger, and this is the tag name. Okay, so that should work absolutely perfectly. All right, so I need to go through that and do that with all of the landing page, um, which is fine. That will be done. Uh, I then need to go and through and do that through the whole of this, and I've done, I've done all the images for... Uh, my mysterious visitors. I've just got to do the tag a bit. Uh, it's Fallich Road, part way through. You can see I've moved my tiles while I'm just trying to sort that out. Um, I did, I thought, I had a change of thought since the last video. If my players decide to mess around and go, oh, it's only a few wolves, we can take them on. I thought actually a battle map would be useful for that. So I've slapped this in. I may or may not use it depending. I want them to run from the wolves. If they're stupid enough to stay and fight, then I wanted to have a battle map on hand to do that. And I've got my wolf noises here um, with the idea being if they manage to exit the map to the north, um, they're safe. Otherwise, the wolves will catch them. So I've just got some hidden wolves here and a couple of dire wolves if I really need to turn up the pressure. Remember that my party that I'm playing with is seven players. So they might feel ballsy enough to take on the wolves. Um, I need to, I need them to change their mind <laughs> and realise that that's a bad idea. So the dire wolves will follow up behind. Uh, and of course, anytime I can just throw out extra, uh, throw out extra wolves if I need to. Okay, so I need to do that with that one. So how does packaging adventures work for this? Now, bearing in mind, obviously, it's not ready to go. If I go to my compendium here, I can open this. Uh, just, yep, it is unlocked. Good. I can go to this. And you can see I've got my Curse of Strahd here. 
um, and that's ready to import adventure. I don't want to import the adventure because I'm making it. But I can right click on here and I can go to rebuild adventure. Now, if you guys want to know how to package these things, I can do a video on that, but I suspect it's quite niche. Um, and a lot of you won't ever need to do it because you're either importing other people's things or you're just making for yourself, which is fine. But uh, if, yeah, if you're interested, I can take you through how to do it. Not that I'm an expert. Okay, remember, I'm never an expert on any of this. <laughs> I'm just like you. I'm just just muddling through and doing the best I can with what I've got. So if I go to contents, you can see here's all of the bits that are being added to this adventure pack. Um, and all I do is I, I drag across the bits that need to be included in this. Um, I'm going to drag house in. And you can see it's added to my scenes, it's added house, and it shows it as green. So say that's something new. I want to take that off because that's not correct. Um, I can add in um, I can add in monsters. So uh, actors here, I've got monsters. I've dragged in all of my monster folder for the bits I'm going to use. Uh, that includes um, like Rose, the ghost of Rose, the ghost of Thorn. And things like that so I need to check to make sure those images are available where I've got different images for those anything from the SRD such as wolf if I'm sticking with the wolf icon it will pull it from the core foundry SRD stuff so I don't need to worry about that um, but anywhere where I've changed it so the broom of animated attack I created an image for that um, so again, I will need to make sure that's packaged correctly. But I basically drag anything across here. Journal entries. You can see I've got my party journal here. Anything I want. And then I click build adventure. Uh, and then that has built it in a way that I can package that and send it to you. So just to show you my... Um, so this is my old structure, okay? But if I go into my Foundry folder, into my data and into my modules, I can, these are all the modules that I've got installed, not necessarily active. Um, and we can see that one of those modules is the one I've created, CG Curse of Strahd. Now I know this is a bit small. Let's see if we can make the, at least make the icons bigger for you. It's got its module JSON file, but it also impacts, let's keep it big. Uh, I've got my adventure pack, with all of those things that I don't understand, particularly what they are, the databases and everything. But I've got my separate folder for my scenes here. So the landing page we looked at, and there's all of the images within the landing page itself that will be packaged up if I send, whoop, if I send this to people. Okay, so that's how it works, that in, in very, very briefly. So I've got quite a lot of work to do, continuing to update my scenes, update all of my buttons with Tagger and things like that. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a couple, good couple of hours of that done today um, and get it back to building new stuff. I've got the whole of the death house to do. That's gonna That might take a while. Uh, actually, it won't take too long because there's some repeated icons rather than anything else. But I've got the death house to do. And then we're back to the village of Barovia. Um, and at the moment, I'm using... I need to check... No, I am using the correct maps. It's it's the house one that I'm not. I'm going to get rid of that house scene right now. But the Blood on the Vine, this is Anabar's map. I'm fairly sure I will double check that. Again, I need to be really cautious about what I share. Um, and then we'll carry on building Blood of the Vine Tavern and building that out as needed. Uh, although, you know, that's kind of almost done. It's got no lighting, I don't think. It has got lighting. I did the lighting. I've forgotten. It's been a while. Got sidetracked by other things. But anyway, that's the process I'm going through at the moment. Um, if you've got any questions about why I'm doing bits or um, anything like that, really, I'm just trying to tidy myself up. I'm trying to be more disciplined with the way I approach this. Curse of Strahd is large. Yes, the hard disk space is cheap. <laughs> But why not be more efficient with it? And I thought by putting it into a module anyway, it's a much easier way for me to back up the whole module. If I had a massive computer crash or something, I've got I can just back up the module. I can stick it online somewhere nice and safe and I can pull it from wherever I need to. And even if I change computers for whatever reason, I can reinstall uh, Foundry, um, reinstall the mods and then just pull in 
the uh, just pull in the whole adventure and it's there. It's a big one. I don't I don't want to have to do it again. <laughs> anyway, I hope that's been vaguely interesting. Might not be. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, let me know if you've got any comments and things. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. You take care now. Bye-bye.